Okay, let's continue the discussion with uh, text FSM with a sample script. Now, there are like variations of uh, text FSMs and these are like really used in broadband works for some of the automations. Now, the original implementation of text FSM templates have been taken into consideration where uh, the usage was mostly out of SCLI. So what do I mean by that is, so let's say, one seventy two seventeen zero two. So if I do show R no resolve, right? like I get this output. Now text FSM template has been authored around to parse this particular output, but in reality, we do a RPC call which gives back an RPC reply which takes into account multi-line, multi-hierarchical FSM templates. Now, there is a difference of implementation here. So, if you go to NTC templates and go to templates and here for example so ls ltrh and we are doing this right so now if you see and if you compare the above output right so we have like mac address interface flags and everything in in a different format right so the output would show mac mac address so and so address so and so interface flags and that's how like it sort of like records now in the xml version so this is not there this is something that uh, i had to edit uh, for the example is uh, in the xml version you have everything in a different way so you have to be a bit careful because like the cli versions are not really um, implemented like this this particular output if you see uh, when we ran it, um, the PyEasy handler said that CLI command is only for debug use. Instead, um, use RPC version of it. Now, once you use RPC, it comes to XML, and once you get to XML, you have to convert it back to text and then like reparse it and something. Um, so that's a different example altogether. But let's try to like understand how how do we do something like this today, right? Now. So first things first, let's define our device arcs. I don't know anything about text FSM or anything, but what I do know is I need a device and I need to connect to that device. So I'll say my host is, this is my Docker. My user is lab and my password is lab123 again uh, just this claim here this is a lab environment for prod use secure methods so we did illustrate this by using a ssh key based login previously so if you have any queries you can just like go in and check for a login method for something more secure all right so i have this one what do i do next so i need to connect to the device now for me to connect to the device i need to have a device module so for that i need to import jnpr junos import device this is something that we have seen before so here i would just give device arcs as dev now 
will say dev dot what are the methods that I have so I have CLI within the CLI what do I have I need a command and what's my command show r resolve and is there anything else that um, I need to understand so obviously the format right so the format should be text so I'll define and I'll say my format is text right? okay what do I do with this I put to an output and let's try to print our output and see if it works and sure enough like this is the plain text it does work it gives the warning but that's that's fine now okay so we got the output from the device right now we need to use text fsm templates library which we have seen before like there are like a lot of templates which are defined to make sure or to to modify the way we are looking at the output okay now if we quickly see the templates this is like a git library that you can download and not only juniper right so it has like all the other vendors it's an open source community contribution so you're free to contribute yourself for example we had a requirement to do it on an xml version so i have just added an xml version of this and different um, situations have different outputs different collections and people have their private fsm templates uh, for uh, their own needs and stuff so let's pretend that we know the template but we'll, we'll come back to the template part now first things first let's import the library okay so we have the output we know that there is a template we need to just link both of them right so first let's get the template that we wanted so we go to this and just copy the path so we have the path so we have this one so with open template as t because the program has to read the template it's not like you just point it and the program will read it no it has to get loaded into the program right so once you do this it opens it up then we'll say fsm say text fsm then there is a very specific module called text fsm which is pretty easy to remember so this takes in like the template uh, that we have just defined so template is t Duh. now the fsm part is loaded right so um, text fsm takes in a module called text fsm it, it reads exactly what template that we wanted it to read which is like the template good now what do we do with the output then so we'll say past output we'll say okay you have read in what do you do next say fsm check this variable now this has another function called parse text but what do i have to parse it's my output so once you pass it what do i need to do let's say we'll print it just to improve some matters right so we'll say import pprint just to look it pretty so once we do that mm, something which is not callable what is that oh so it's from preprint import preprint there you go so now it's really neatly formatted you have like it's within a list and within a list it's an iterable and you have the format as well so you have some sort of um, conversion from a plain text output to something that is now 
uh, scriptable something that you can use it to uh, go ahead and um, supply it to to something else so this is exactly what i wanted to show you now if you wanted to write a clean code wherein it takes like exceptions and everything uh, the co the code is uploaded to git anyways uh, to the course library but um, the reason why i had to take this sort of approach is like first of all uh, the main concept is like you connect to the device you load a template and you read the template everything around it are the production mechanisms or the nice to have mechanisms which obviously you need to have but then again like let's get the original concept um and it does and it is even more redundant if i just like start coding um this huge 69 70 lines of code um, and, and actually it's like there's no no value add to it so uh, if you go through the same logic right from from what we have seen to what it is here so we have obviously imported some of the things now even with the imports you first start writing the code and then like go back and import whatever you want it will just come back to you instead of guessing it so we had a juniper device its username password and everything is loaded so first we got the arp table show arp no result it's the same thing but instead of like the cli we used um, obviously a arp.arp table so that you will get it from gnpr.junosoft the ops the command and everything is is covered already but just in case if you are only seeing this video then yeah you have this particular module so you have this particular thing in again xml um, the templates are written to handle the text version of it so you have to convert it into text using a bunch of different libraries so in this case you'll use jxmles that's one of the xml parsers which is available in the juniper and um, obviously after that it's again the same logic right so you just parse the output you load the template file um, you use text fsm dot uh, fsm and you load the template you load, you do the parse text and it's just like nicely written so that it's applicable for a wider case scenarios but uh, the concept is exactly the same thank you so much and see you in another video